So next up for your Seattle Mariners is Andres Munoz, who appeared in 52 games for your Seattle Mariners, 49 innings, 2.94 ERA, a 67 to 22 strikeout to walk ratio with 13 saves. Certainly not bad numbers and lots of really good from Andre Munoz that will go over, but maybe not the step forward that we were hoping for. Extremely high expectations, but maybe not the step that we were hoping for. Before we get into all of it, let's thank Simply Seattle. Simply Seattle has the very best in Seattle sports gear. Great stuff for those Mariners, of course, but great stuff as well for the Kraken who stink but have great uniforms, so go purchase. Huskies who are just awesome and have great uniforms as well. Cougars, Storm, Sounders, Supersonics, you can find it all at Simply Seattle. Use code MOLLYWAT15 to save 15% off your order. There is a link in the description. Thank you so much to the Gary. To the Gary? Thank you so much, Gary. Thank you so much to Simply Seattle. Not sure who Gary is, but thanks. I have an Uncle Gary. Hi, Uncle Gary, if you're watching. So Andre Munoz appeared in 64 games with a 2.49 ERA and a 96 to 15 strikeout to walk ratio in the year 2022. And I know he had made 22 appearances for the Padres in 2019, but I still consider 2022 to be Andre Munoz for all intents and purposes, rookie season. It was certainly his first full year of pitching. And there were more than flashes. There were continued streaks where Andres Munoz was among, if not the, very best relievers in baseball. He was sensational. That stuff is so sick. And he was missing bats with it at an insane level. So let's talk about what happens in 2023. And I have to be honest with you folks. I was watching these videos and I, I've liked all of them. I haven't done a great job of reviewing 2023 compared to previewing 2024. And I'll preview 2024 with Munoz too. But I want to recap the year because look, the Seattle Mariners in 2023, it was not my favorite season. I loved recording these videos and all that stuff. But it was a bad year for me personally, and I think the Seattle Mariners were a pretty major disappointment to a lot of you, including myself. But let's talk about what happens with Andre Munoz in 2023. First, in 2022, right around December, I believe, he undergoes an off-season surgery. And he gets back into spring training games very late. I was kind of surprised he ended up making the opening day roster. I thought he might get an injured list stint. He doesn't. And he goes and he makes he makes the team. He gets a save in that very first game that Luis Castillo shoved in and Ty France accidentally hit a home run in. <laughs> but he doesn't quite look the same. He makes five appearances and then he goes down with an injury. And the Mariners say it's going to be a couple of weeks. By the way, never believed anything about a pitcher injury. A couple of weeks always is a couple of months. A couple of months is almost always a year. Yada, yada, yada. Just don't believe it. They're going to be optimistic about it. It's almost always nonsense. So yes, he misses those two months, almost exactly two months. His last appearance before the injury is April 7th. His next appearance is June 6th. And he comes back. And it's only a sample of eight games. But in those eight games, Andre Munoz is as dominant as I've ever seen him. I'm going to give you the numbers now, okay? So he makes eight appearances, and it's seven and two-thirds innings. And I understand that this is an extremely small sample. But I'm going to give it to you anyway. Seven and two-thirds innings over those eight games, like I keep saying. He allowed one hit, zero runs, and he struck out 15 batters against three walks. He was absolutely lights out. He was as good, if not better, than any Seattle Mariner reliever I can remember. And that's saying something. We've, Yes, the Mariners have had some terrible bullpens. Uh, bad enough bullpens that it probably cost the Seattle Mariners a championship at one point. Because they didn't win enough games to... Yeah, well, let's not talk about it. Let's not talk about it. They've had some great bullpens too. 2021, 2001, last year. Even this year's was pretty good. But he looked absolutely sensational. And then June 30th happens. And you may not remember June 30th. 
I do. Andre Munoz goes one inning and he gives up four runs. He comes in in a 4-4 game. And they end up losing that game 15-4. to And this is the low point of the Seattle Mariners season, too. They lost two of three to Washington. And then that very next game, after losing two of three to Washington. No, it wasn't the very next game. But, well, maybe it was. I don't remember. Doesn't matter. That was the low point of the Seattle Mariners season. Without question, the low point. And from that point on, folks, Andre Munoz was just okay. From June 30th to the end of the season, a 3.79 ERA. I know, I know, reliever ERA. But 49 strikeouts in 38 innings, not great. Not bad, by Heck, a lot of relievers will take it. For Andre Munoz, not great. In 15 walks. Now, Extremely high batting average balls in play. I think it was 356. I'm not going to look that back up. It doesn't matter. But for his last 40 appearances, Andre Munoz, he wasn't terrible, but he was just another guy. At a time where the Mariners needed him to be a lot more than just another guy. Was it due to injury? Was it due to... I don't think it was pressure because we saw Andre Munoz really good in much more pressured situations, I think, in 2022. But he just didn't look like the same dude for the majority of 2023 that he did in 2022. Now, here's the good news. The metrics here, oh, the metrics here are just stupid. Even in a season that is considered by me to be disappointing, We're talking about a pitcher who was in the 94th percentile in expected ERA, 91st in expected batting average, 99th in whiffs. Hitter swung at pitches and missed 39.4% of time against this dude. That's unbelievably good. I'm shocked that there are pitchers who are better than that. Audrey Munoz, that he was in the 99th percentile. Strikeout percentage in the 95th. Ground ball percentage for somebody who throws as hard as Andre Munoz to generate as many ground balls as he does is crazy. Those are insanely good numbers. The only number here that's bad, and there's a couple that are just okay, like hard hit percentage of 35.9, eh. Uh, Average exit velocity, 88.4, eh. Extension, 43rd percentile. I don't think extension really matters for Andre Munoz with that fastball and slider, but Walk rate was an eh. It was eh. 10.4%. It's in the bottom 22nd percentile. That's atrocious. For somebody that they're relying on so much. You can compensate, and if clearly Andre Munoz did to a point. But he's got to be better. He has to throw more consistent strikes. And I think some of this had to do with the fact that for a while here, Andre Munoz was relying too much on his slider. We talked about it in a lot of recap videos where I wanted to see Andre Munoz challenge hitters. And he started to do it late in the year. And to be honest with you, a lot of times it didn't work. The fastball just wasn't the same. I'm going to give you his fastball and slider stuff, but I got to pull it up. So, uh, Here's a weird edit. So let's look at the numbers against the pitch type for Andre Munoz because I think these are somewhat telling, but also I don't know if this is what it's going to look like in 2024, but we're reviewing 2023, like I said. So he threw his slider 48.6% of the time and batters hit 230 against it with a 360 slugging percentage. And they swung and missed at this thing. 48.3% of the time. Wow. You take a look at his four-seam fastball, which he used, uh, I believe, 19% of the time. It just went away from me for some reason. This is one of the problems with doing the videos the way I did. Anyway, he threw it 271 times. 
Batters only hit 184 against it. But his whiff percentage was 18% lower, 30.5. And then his sinker, which he threw 159 times. Batters hit 229, whiffed at it 27.8% of the time. Now, better batting average allowed against his fastball, but not as much put away, which is interesting to me for somebody who throws as hard. However, Andre Munoz was not necessarily throwing as hard as he was in 2022 for a lot of the year but certainly hard enough. Certainly hard enough that you'd think he would get more swings and misses as he does. And I realize that spin rate matters here a lot. I think he was, I think he generates enough spin that he should be missing more bats with that fastball. But the main reason I was getting so frustrated that he wasn't using his fastball more, and he did use it more towards the end of the year, enough so that he ended up throwing his fastball more than his slider. That was not the case for a large portion of the season. He just didn't have great command of that slider. He was struggling to get ahead of hitters with it. And I get it. The Seattle Mariners have become what the New York Mets were at one point, what the Chicago White Sox were before that. Slider University. You're going to see a ton of him. Everybody on the Seattle Mariners that you're going to see going forward, as long as the DePoto era is running, and I think it'll run for a little while longer. We can get into it some other time. It's going to be slider heavy. They are big believers in it, and I get it. It's a very hard pitch to square up. It's a very hard pitch to just make contact with. So they're going to have Andre Munoz throw a lot of sliders. And it's made a vast improvement. When Andre Munoz was coming up for the Padres before the trade, he was a guy who the scouting report suggested 80-grade fastball, 50-grade slider, give or take. It's different now. It's 80-grade fastball. And probably a good 60 not quite plus plus because it doesn't have that that vertical movement. I think it would necessitate calling it that pitch. But it's a good pitch. It is a pitch that you have to be more than cognizant of. But I was frustrated by Andre Munoz because he was falling behind with that pitch so much. And I just wanted to see him challenge hitters. And yes, when he challenged hitters, it led to less swing and miss. But hitters slugged 224 against the pitch. They slugged 360 against his slider. 360 is a fine rate. But that's 136 points lower. 136 points less slugging and about 50 points less in batting average. I think Andre Munoz is going to have much better command of his stuff with a normal offseason. And hopefully not a two-month break. You never know. Relievers who throw as hard as he do, and I'm certainly not rooting for injuries. I think I just said as hard as he do. As hard as he does. Relievers, pitchers with this skill set, it's always going to be risky. But assuming good health, I see no reason to think that he can't return to being one of the very best relievers in baseball again. And they need him to be because they're not going to go sign a established closer. With Andre Munoz and Matt Brash and Justin Topa, I feel like they feel, and they probably should feel, like they have one of the better bullpens in baseball, along with some other names that we've mentioned earlier. And we've got a couple to mention too, including Brash and Topa, of course. But I'm curious what you guys thought of Andre Munoz in 2023. Because in 2022, I trusted him 
as much as any Mariner reliever in a long time. In 2023, I trusted him for a very long time, but after July, or the start of July, I should say, he was just a guy. And in 2024, the Mariners need him to be a lot more than just a guy. So yeah, that'll do it. Please hit like and please hit subscribe. I really appreciate the support. I think you guys saw uh, on the Twitter that I've been going through some stuff. And there'll be more stuff coming out. I'm I'm very upset with a company that owes me a lot of money. A lot of money in my humble estimation. And it owes my teammates a lot of money. And that's what really makes me mad. But it's been tough. I really appreciate your support. It's helped get through this a lot. 2023 can just absolutely go to Hades in a hand basket. But yeah, please hit like, please hit subscribe, follow me on all those websites. Really appreciate it. I think Andre Munoz is going to be great in 2024. But I think it's fair to say he wasn't great in 2023.